Yeah, I mean, um, when I saw Guyton last year, I mean, he's taller than me by probably an inch. Uh, he's long. Uh, I mean, when I saw his uh, footwork, man, he's really impressive. Just a nimble guy, extremely athletic, so yeah. has all the traits. You know, obviously, I think he'll get stronger. He needs to get in the weight room, you know, like everybody does. But I think once that happens, he can be an elite player. He's just got incredible size and just uh, movement skills. Just just very fluid. I bet you could see it on tape. Just a very – Yeah. Yeah. All that. So, Lee, did you come to, to – how, how do you handle putting to bed that kind of season? Like, I'm curious, a guy like you who's such a competitor – Who's a winner? Like, how do you how do you reconcile and put to bed last season, this past season? Yeah, I mean, my approach to every game, you know, win or lose is, um, you know, did, how was my effort? How did how was all that? I think the effort was good. I just think, um, you know, whenever stuff was wasn't going bad, I wish we could have stopped the bleeding a little bit earlier than what we did. You know, we never did stop it; it just kept bleeding. So that's probably more frustrating. Just you know, starting the season how we did and then finishing the way we did, um, you know, it's very disheartening. But, you know, what I preach to a lot of the younger guys, man, is just, uh, you know, however the game's going, whatever you are, uh, try to have good body language um, all the time. Don't give these deep, don't give the other team any tape to, so they can have any ammunition. Um, so, yeah, just try to finish the best way you could. So, you know, it was terrible down in Tampa Bay. We ended up getting blown out. But, you know, through it all, I wanted to finish strong for Kels. And just, uh, you know, whatever happens, just play hard. And so, uh, and obviously next year, make some adjustments. We're hiring some new coordinators now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's one of those seasons that I've never really been a part of. You know, I've been a, a part of, you know, winning seasons. And then, you know, you lose in the playoffs. But really how we started to where we ended, I don't know if it's, I don't know if any other teams ever done that before. It's, it was it, it was a spiral you guys couldn't get out of. I'll tell you that, Lane. But you know, you did mention yeah, Kels. You did mention Kels. We all saw him on uh, this past weekend, Saturday night. He was having a good time in uh, in Kansas in Buffalo. <laughs> uh, we all watched, and now he was having so much fun, Lane. It looks like he wants to return. Have you talked to Jason yeah. at all this past week? Uh, I mean, I talked to him a little bit. <laughs> You know, towards the end of the season, you know, I think physically, I think he could play for another few years, um, just, um, you know, from that standpoint. But I think, um, you know, I think he'll have the option to come back. But I think what he was doing this year, um, you know, I don't think he expected, you know, when he was starting the podcast that it would end up doing what it's doing or how much traction it would get. So I think he's having yeah. fun with that. And I think he's, you know, exploring other options, maybe being a broadcaster or, um, but I think really this year kind of he was seeing, you know, some of the possibilities that were opening for, you know, life after football, you know. So he has he has a lot of options, um, which is good. But, you know, I love to have him back. But, you know, at the same time, man, I, I know with this game, the, the toll it brings on the body. So, um, you know, either way, um, even if he's not playing, I'm, I'm going to expect him to be up there at least two days a week to uh, for morale boost and, uh, and to come in. But, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't discount him coming back. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be a tremendous loss. I, I always tr trust your eye. Right? Like I, I trust your eye. Like when you when you see something about this game, like I, I perk up. I listen to it. I know Baldy and I, we both talk, we talk about you all the time. What what, what fall, you have any theories as to kind of how it kind of spiraled away? Um. Well. You know, as the season uh, progresses, as they get more tape on you, um, you know, teams look at, you know, how were other teams effective in shutting you down. And so I think this maybe it started with the 49ers and then, you know, the nosebleed kept coming. We didn't make those adjustments. And so I think they just kept bringing the kind of same plan of attack and it kept working and we weren't able to adjust to it. And so I think that was really it. But, yeah, like you said, sometimes it takes teams a little bit to get film. And once a team has a successful game against you or a good game plan, then teams kind of piggyback off of that. So, you know, I think that's kind of what happened. You know, they always say the league always has a way of figuring figuring you out. So, you know, I think they figured figured us out. We didn't adjust, and it was, you know, it was evident. 
Lane, you, you mentioned the 49ers. You've seen them twice in the last year. You've seen them, obviously, this year and in the NFC Championship game. Tell me what you see from the 49ers defense. Obviously, they've got a lot of named players. Uh, yeah. You know, Nick Bosa, it kind of starts with Bosa. But, you know, Warner and Chase and, you know, Dre Greenlaw. Yeah. They've got, you know, obviously, you know, Javon Hargrave. So, how would you kind of – if you were just – giving a scouting report on Sunday, NFL on Fox Lane, what would you – how would you build that 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 scout report on the 49ers for this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a great pursuit team. I feel like they really tackle well. They swarm the ball well. Um, you know, I think when they looked at some of the run games, um, I don't know if they – I think there was a stat the other night that they didn't have allow, like, a guy to have a single 100-yard rusher on them. Uh, in like 51 games. So they do a good job of shutting guys down, making it tough. But, you know, I think they, they apply a pressure, obviously, with their pass rushers. Uh, Fred Warner, sideline to sideline. But uh, teams are trying to attack them, uh, run the football. I think Green Bay did a good job. There were teams that yeah. did a, a good job with it. But um, at the same time, man, um, yeah, I just thought they play hard, um, you know, especially Bosa. I mean, uh, he's one of these guys. He's like a Max Crosby, a T.J. Watt that, uh, in the run game or pass game, he's always bringing that motor. And I think, you know, Fred Warner is another guy like that, too. He's always playing hard. Um, but really, yeah, what I saw, man, they were just swarming to the football. You know, even if a guy was across the field, these guys are hauling butt over there to make tackles. And so I thought the effort level is extremely high. Lane, you started the season last year in Detroit, 2022 season in Detroit. It was Aiden Hutchinson's first game as a pro. What do you remember about Aiden? I mean, obviously, he's become a lot more polished. You know, yeah. they play him everywhere now, up and down the def uh, defensive line. But what do you remember about that first game with, with him and Aiden Hutchinson specifically? Yeah, I mean, I thought he had tremendous potential. You know, I looked, you know, at his body type. Um, you know, he's tall. I mean, he doesn't have incredible length, but he has enough. But what I, I think what I've seen just from the first game, I feel like he's definitely developed – his pass rush game where now he's setting up guys with moves. So he may rush high, rush high, rush high. And then, you know, later in the game, spin back inside. So I feel like maybe, you know, his football IQ has gone up and and he's a more polished pass rusher this season. I mean, you see a sack numbers from a year ago to now, but I feel like his production, his pressures were up because he's become, um, I guess, more of a student of the game. And like you said, those great pass rushers, they always have a plan of attack. They know where guys are successful. So they do they do a good job of setting you up uh, and baiting you and then beat you, um, you know, when the time's right. Like, it, it, can you explain the Chiefs and Andy back there again? I mean, it, yeah. it's incredible. What, what, a, what an amazing story, man. He's such a great coach. Yeah, I think Spags is a, a really good defense coordinator. Um, I think what he does a lot is he do he does a lot of late. Um, you know, he, he does a lot of disguises in the last minute. He'll get into what he's trying to do. And so from an offensive standpoint, you know, you have your calls and then they change something last minute and you're trying to get these calls in. And they know that. And then they realize the timing of it makes it very difficult. So they do a good job of disguising stuff and then bringing it late. And allowing your calls to be really messed up and, and really what it does it you know usually uh, makes somebody free somebody's missing assignment and somebody comes free but they're another team that i feel like they really swarm to the ball i feel like they have really good linebackers i remember playing uh, you know number 50 gay i thought he was a great linebacker yeah. but what made it really difficult was is like you know we're on the road they know when our guards tapping and they and they and they do like a lot of these shifts and stunning you know, right whenever, um, you know, last minute to where our calls are already made and they and they make blocking them, uh, you know, the assignment-wise, very difficult. And that's what he's really good at. And then offensively, you know, I feel like they've adjusted. You know, I feel like they really, you know, they double-teamed uh, Travis a lot during the year. But, mm -hmm. you know, somehow they still find a way. You know, they talk about their receivers aren't what they were last year. But here they are again, you know, beating the odds. Um, you know, it's a close game against the Bills, but, uh, you know, when you have Patty Mahomes back there, he can, uh, you know, he can kind of erase a lot of mistakes for you. But, um, yeah, they're just they're very crafty in what they do, and they're really good at it. 
Lane, I have a, a general question uh, to ask. It, it involves the final four teams because all four teams, the Ravens led the league in rushing. McCaffrey led the league as an individual rusher. Detroit runs the ball really, really good. Um, you know, all the way through. And so you look at the – in Kansas City now has a power running game with Pacheco. My question, Lane, is this. Every offensive line I've ever played on and everyone I ever talked to, they want to run the football. But yet all these analytics out there say you got to throw it to win it. And it feels like in order to run it, you have to be committed to running it. Because there's yeah. always there's always like a fine line, a fine dance lane with that running back in the line, where it's going to hit, how you're going to get to the mic, how you're going to seal the backside. Like all these things always have to get figured out once the game starts. Walkthroughs yeah. on Wednesday don't fix it. So I guess my question, Lane, is why can't more teams just commit to it, to be good at it? And because I, I feel like that was an issue with your offense this year is yeah. that you couldn't commit to it, even though when you did it, you were good at it. Yeah, I felt like, you know, whenever we have ran the ball really well, we really started the game well. So really like a good burst, first couple of opening drives. And so I feel like the confidence in it is there rather than getting stuffed. And I feel like sometimes a run game changes or, or we have a plan and then you get behind a couple of scores and then it's like, it's all out the window, you know, we're, we're going to throw it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it. one thing about the run game, man, it, is it can help out every other aspect. Um, you know, the more you can beat guys up physically, it slows down the pass rush. The more you get on these linebackers and get in their face, you know, the less, um, you know, the more they're thinking about that rather than covering. So, uh, you know, it's a great way to run the clock. It's a great way to slow the game down. But I feel like, um, you know, there was times where um, it's like Minnesota, we had a good game. I mean, there wasn't very many where we had really big run games, but a lot of yeah. it, we stuck with it whenever we really hit it early and we had confidence in it. And then if we, I feel like if we ever got behind, I mean, I already knew what time was. We're going to throw it. Um, you know, we're kind of behind in the yeah. in the score, yeah. so weren't as committed. But yeah, it was frustrating. Um, you know, we had a we had a run game package for Tampa, and then they line up in like a six two the whole game, and so they're they're pretty much saying to throw the ball. And so, yeah, it's something. Um, you know, sometimes you may get stuffed early, but then stuff opens up late in the game. So I felt like maybe next year I have more confidence in it, but. As far as the offensive lineman's point of view, and rather than sitting back, drop you know dropping back, throwing the ball, and giving these rushers just you know what they want, they want to rush the ball. They don't want to play the run. So, whenever you can attack guys, it's a, it's a lot better mindset. It's a lot it's a lot more fun for O linemen, so to speak. If you can beat guys up physically, because you know whenever they're going to whenever you do throw the ball that they they're a little bit more tired now. It kind of limits the pass trust. So, if you ever come and watch our practices, a lot of what we're doing is make blocks, you know, t blocks. Um, and that's what we like. That's what we love to do. I love beating a guy up. And then, you know, when it comes time to rush the quarterback, they're not as effective. So <laughs> I'd like to see a little bit more of that next year. Hopefully we can get up on, on teams and stay with it. How, how did they How did they play you the first the, – in the first game, you guys rushed for 201 yards against them. How, how, how different was it? Because it was interesting. Early in the game, you guys had success. Swift had a little bit of success early. Yeah, I think that they may have done some – I got to go back and watch the tape, but I think the first game might have been a little bit more four down. Then they may have run some diamond every now and then, but they weren't in specifically like a 6-1, six, 6-2 six, kind yeah. of package that they were in, in in the playoffs, which was saying, hey, you're not going to run it in here. All the gaps are covered. Um, and then they're doing all these split zero stuff um, where you had to have quick decisions and get out of it. And so we weren't doing good at that either. So it was really just a double whammy where we weren't effective. But – yeah, they definitely changed up uh, for their approach uh, during the playoffs because they knew what we were trying to do. Lane, you played in a couple of these NFC Championship games. To the fans out there that are listening to this, does the game feel different to you when you play at that level or Super Bowl level? Does the game yeah. feel different? Or once this ball's kicked off and you're out there in the huddle coming on and off the field, does it feel the same? Yeah, I mean, as far as myself, I feel like I have a lot more nerves and kind of anxiousness towards the beginning of the season. And then by the time, you know, the last game is over and the playoffs come around, I'm so numb to it because I played, obviously, you know, 17 games 
And yeah, I just kind of get numb to the crowd. I kind of get numb to it. You know, we're doing the same plays over and over. We're doing walkthroughs over and over, you know, for all these weeks. And by the time I get to playoffs, I'm just like, uh, I'm numb to it. I don't really have a whole lot of emotions. I mean, obviously I want to win in advance, but you know, as far as being up or down, uh, I feel like a lot of guys are just uh, numb. They're kind of burned out from just being riding the emotions of the season to where you kind of just get numb to it. Uh, mm. At least that's been my experience later in the yeah. season. Um, you know, it becomes more, okay, this is what I have. I'm not really thinking about the ifs and buts. I feel like that's a lot more, you know, the first three or four games, um, you know, when you're trying to get your season rolling. But, yeah, it's a little bit different mindset. I, I just feel like I'm, I'm very numb to everything. How, how hard is it, like, when you make a run like you did last year, right, the following year, like, how hard is it to sustain that? Because you play so deep into it. You're playing these yeah. high-stress games. Is is there a is there also, like, a almost a hangover effect? Like, we always talked about that the following year. Is this just yeah. take a lot out of you, Lane? Well, yeah. I mean, the season's over in February, and, you know, usually guys are back in there, um, you know, early April for OTA, so you're – all season is definitely limited compared to other teams that have exited early. So, you know, I think your approach is you, you do have to rest, but at the same time, you know, OTAs aren't too far, far around. So I feel like your off season is a little bit adjusted. And then just coming in, you know, I remember our 2018 season, 18, 19 being a lot different than our 17, 18, you know, we came in, um, you know, Super Bowl champs and, and, and people know that. So I feel like you're getting everybody's best, or at least everybody seems like that. And, I felt like games were very, very difficult for the 18-19 year. I felt like we, we handled it very well at the beginning of the season. And then, like you said, um, when the 49ers came to town, that was kind of like the start of the nosebleed for us that we couldn't stop. But I felt like we were focused. I felt like going in that, at least from my experience, we voiced that, hey, it's going to be a lot more challenging this year. You're going to get teams best. Um, you know, you're, not, you're not coming in as, as kind of what you were the season before is – um, as somebody that wasn't expected to, you know, be where they were at. So the expectations are different. Your mindset is different. But, you know, I think with all that, you have to have a routine. You have to you have to put in time every day. So, you know, whenever the games come around, you're ready. You know, you're not you're not worrying about this and that. You're you've been working, so that should translate. So, and it did for the first half of the year, and then, you know, once all that happened, it just kind of went downhill. <laughs> How is Nick? I, I, are you, do you feel good about, you know, kind of moving forward now and, you know, kind of trying to get a little more, like, you know, stability, you get the new OC, but you still have Nick there? Yeah, I felt I felt Nick was very even kill, even when we were losing. Um, I mean, obviously you could see the coaches were frustrated, but, um, you know, I think the, the messages were clear. Um, you know, the job assignments were clear. I just felt like um, we could have done better. Um, you know, maybe uh, scheming wise or just, um, you know, going into games, um, maybe communicate with players. Okay, all, all of us in here together, how do we fix this? Rather than, you know, is it Brian's fault? Is it Nick's fault? Uh, it goes down to communication. So, you know, a lot of times you can learn a lot from your players. And, and so I'd say that. So moving forward, forever in that predicament again, it's going to go down to communication. And sometimes whenever you lose – people in the building tend to isolate sometimes, you know, even players, things aren't going well, you know, um, they're kind of hiding a little bit. So yeah. I think for us, um, you know, if, whenever that situation does happen again, if it does happen again, um, you know, I think our communication has to become stronger and yet become tighter. So, and, and become a team and not, and not separate. Hey, Lane, last question for me. Uh, they hired Vic Fangio to be your defensive coordinator. He was there. Um, with with Gannon two years ago, I'm just curious. I don't know what kind of role he played, Lane. I, I really don't. What What do you remember about about Vic and what his role was? And if you interacted with him at all, was he out there every day, sort of, kind of like yeah, another set of eyes? Because I, I think they wanted to hire him right away last year yeah. when they lost Gannon, and then he went to Miami. So I think it caught him off guard a little bit. Yeah, I think they were grooming him to be the next DC. I remember him being in there like really towards the end of the season, like playoff run. And so, you know, for him, I think he's trying to, you know, see what personnel we have 
and kind of see, you know, if he does become DC, okay, where, where are our holes? What do we need to fix? So, uh, you know, I felt we had that going. And obviously the Gannon situation happened and he went to Miami. But uh, heading back, you know, I think, um, you know, he knows kind of what we have and kind of what, you know, new players you may want to bring in and how he wants to adjust. So um, it may have been similar with Patricia this year. I know he was kind of, um, you know, he was thrown into D.C. mid-year, but I felt like kind of this, he may have been in kind of a similar situation where he was here, you know, Sean's running the defense, and then maybe next year he comes in. But either way, um, you know, I think Vic is a, is a great defense coordinator. Um, I think he did good things against us in Miami. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think he'll be good for us. He's got a lot of experience. And, uh, yeah, I think with his time with us that he does have an understanding of our roster, and I think our approach will be better. Um, you know, with him back. Well, yeah, just, just curious for, from your standpoint, because you, you've been through, you know, different coaches, different styles, training camps. Do, do you believe, like, do you believe in a, a more arduous training camp or do you, you know, kind of throughout the season? Like, I always feel like you're like, what's your view on, you know, the way you practice, the way you approach early in the season, as opposed to how it goes yeah, I mean, training camp is, um, you know, a lot of it, you're trying to get your players in shape. You're trying to see, you know, kind of simulate the season. You know, you put all these days back and back and back together, and you kind of see how players react with adversity. So, you know, you kind of see a lot of that. I think, you know, obviously training camps were a lot different than what they are now. It's kind of a, um, a titty baby league now, um, you know, as far as when you hear stories of how balding them used to practice. Or it's like the Junction Boys yeah. style. Yeah. Wait, if, I, if I was in the league the way you're in the league now, I would have a part time job. I, I, I'd have yeah. a part time job in addition to playing football if I was in your business right now. I, yeah, I'd I, play, remember, I, I would pay Jackie 20 Slater, years, Lane. I remember Jackie Slater was talking about uh, for every training camp he missed, yeah. he probably got two more good seasons well, yeah. out of it. So, That's yeah, true. I, mean, I think there's a time where you have to be, you know, obviously physical, a stern camp. But, you know, the way it is now, they're trying to watch injuries and all that. But, you know, I think a lot of the success during a season is, you know, obviously how you practice. But a lot of it is if you have a great scout team that are presenting good looks, I think these people are often overlooked. But these players, the scout team and the people you see every day, those people are probably some of the most important people in the building as far as wow. presenting look and effort. So I felt like that was good. I felt like our effort was good. But, you know, maybe moving forward, um, you know, Maybe keep the pads on Thursdays. I don't know. There's there's obviously something you want to change, but I feel like our, you know, our practice schedule is pretty similar to what it was the year before. We just perform better. So, um, yeah, whenever stuff isn't going right, hey, if your team isn't isn't physical, hey, let's put these pads on on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. And hell, they used to do it Fridays, and I heard coaches even do it Saturdays too back in the day. So, yeah, um, yeah, whenever your product isn't matching up to what you want it to, yeah, there's got to be changes. So. I expect there'll probably be some changes this year, um, you know, for the better. I mean, it's it, it's all good. Lane, I, it, first of all, just thanks, brother, man. We we so appreciate you. You know, you, you got to get some rest, man. You get down there, stress free, work on the farm. Could be Lane, good. Go get that cut taken care of, man. Go get that cut taken care of right now. Yeah, yeah. I think I will. I need to get some Neosporin and a band aid, and I'll be good. All right. All we're right, going gonna, gonna to come down and see you. All right. Yeah. Come on. I'm down here. All right, buddy. Thanks, Lane. Thanks, brother. All right. I'll talk to you soon, bud. Yep. We all silly like the mayor. 